because true understanding is what brings us to obedience. Grace and peace, everybody. Welcome to Sabbath School Study Group. My name is Chris Bailey. This is part two. Well, it's actually part four of the five part series, but this is part two from yesterday, the sandwich story. In the previous study, we saw that Jesus understands when we misunderstand because it's only true understanding that can lead to true obedience. Before we go to today's thought, I want to thank you for watching. Please subscribe to the channel. We appreciate you passing this video on to someone else. And you can also do that by clicking that like button. It helps it easier for that algorithm to find this thought so that we can all be encouraged in our faith and visit us online. That's at changeministry.org. We would love to come to your school, your church, wherever you might be and encourage the saints there. The way to connect with us, there is our email address and also the contact link at changeministry.org. So here we go. True understanding for the sake of obedience. That's the goal. Not just knowing a lot, but knowing a lot so that there's that much more that we could actually do and experience. In this sandwich story in Mark chapter three, it goes on to say after he's dealt and had story time and sermon time in 31, it says there came then his brethren and his mother and standing without outside sent unto Jesus calling him. And the multitude sat about him and they said unto him, behold, thy mother and thy brethren without seek for thee. So here it is again. Jesus was dealing with the scribes and the Pharisees. Then on the other hand, he's got his friends. And now you get to like what could probably be the hardest group that any believer has to deal with when it comes to their faith or even trying to win some over to your faith. And that's family. Nobody loves you like family, but at the same time, nobody knows you like family. And I really think it's nothing intrinsic in family that makes it hard to deal with or, or, or to witness the family. I think the challenge is that because they know us so well, they are so aware of our past. It's, it's really, really hard. It takes more faith to invest in a belief in what then your future can be because they know so much of your history. And so when Jesus is dealing with family, what can we learn? Well, it says there in verse 33, Jesus answers them saying, who is my mother? Now he's not talking to his family. He's talking to the messengers that his family has sent to call him out of this meeting so that they can come to him. Right. So they try to they try to <laughs> on the side, they're almost trying to pull it. Do you know who we are? Get out of here, boy. You know, they're trying to pull one of those moves. So Jesus answered them and he says, who is my mother or my brethren? And here is where it gets good. It gets good because this is the part of the crowd that you and I would have been in if we were there. It says he looked round on them, what sat about him. And he said, behold, look, my mother and my brethren, because what's What's family? What does it mean in Jesus's mind to be family? For whosoever shall do the will of God, the same is my brother and my sister and mother. This is so beautiful. It, say, it paints such a, a, a clear picture of the Godhead. It paints a picture of our relationship. It paints a picture of, of, of our intimacy that we can have and how Christ really does pull up beside us and part, he, he hitches up, or I should say, he hitches our wagon to his and pulls us through this light. Because what he says here is, whosoever does the will of God, they become my brother. They become my sister. So he's identifying God as God and he's identifying us as brothers and sisters. So you mean to tell me that, that even though he's our high priest and even though he's our intercessor, even though he is our Lord, he is the familial connection is that we are legally now brothers and sisters of Christ while being the sons and daughters of God. So Jesus is showing us what it really means to be family. And this familial relationship is not based on bloodlines, you know, between us and one another, but it's based on the bloodline between us and him. One of the things I love about the Bible is that whatever is said, if it's truth here, it'll be truth there. And each will affirm each other. He said the same thing over here in Matthew. In Matthew chapter seven, verse 21, he even uses into the negative where he says, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my father, which is in heaven. 
Based on what we see here in Mark, we can even go on to say, but he that doeth the will of my father, which is in heaven, becomes my brother or my sister here on earth. That's the evidence. That's the token. That's the family reunion t-shirt. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about, how you know when you have family reunion, you put on the family reunion t-shirt. So you can just look anywhere around the park. You can go anywhere to the cookout, you know, oh, that's that's a Bailey or okay, yeah, that's a somebody. And, and you can call them out by shirt. This is our shirt. How God calls us out, our family reunion shirt is do we follow him? 